Greetings and welcome. Thanks for checking out the latest update on Interstellar Frontier, the space exploration game I'm building for the Godot engine. I'm going to do a quick tease here with the new player ship. I've been working on the exterior of this ship and I've started modeling the interior. I can't wait to do an update video on the ship itself very, very soon. But for now, we're going to focus on the planets and the planetary generation in the game. Uh, kind of give you an idea of what kind of environments you can expect to see once Interstellar Frontier is ready to go. So here we've got an Earth-like planet, and I'm showing that because it's probably the most interesting planet for somebody to stumble upon uh, when they're in a procedurally generated universe. Games, I think I'm going to have quite a few of them because the populated habitable planets will be great places to pick up missions. So let me talk about the procedural generation uh, of a planet and show you some of the options that I built in to the planetary generator and we'll start by taking a look at the atmosphere height which is adjustable so you can see we've got the planet just getting a bit of a fatter atmosphere here and we can bring that back down I can also edit the cloud cover which is going to be great to uh, add some variety here Let's see, what else have we got? We can increase the polar caps or decrease them. You see them grow here in the uh, northern and southern hemisphere, and you can take it to the extremes and really freeze the planet. And we've also got some options for the texture itself, the colors. We can increase the surface vegetation which is pretty much at the maximum here already but we can decrease it so you can see everything will start to get quite a bit browner all throughout the map and let's have a look here let's take it all the way out you see it really starts to brown out there now we've got a planet that is completely lifeless let's have a look next at some colors so with these uh... Uh, procedurally generated planets you might have different chemical compositions that might make a planet look maybe more red or maybe the planet would look more green so I can individually uh, edit the color channels of each planet so that we can get some real variety in uh, the planets that we generate even these frozen rocks I'm gonna take this out here lost my atmosphere there we go let's take out the red and let's add the vegetation back in there we go next let's take out some oceans make the continents kind of go away you can see the difference in the luster between the continents the islands and the water it's one of the things I think makes a planet look really dynamic and look more interesting when you're generating a planet in computer graphics. When they're all the same luster, you don't get these nice shines. So I'm playing with the uh, the metallic luster of the uh, shaders here. Um, also with uh, with shaders, you can write normal maps. So this is actually all very smooth model, and all of the shadows and everything you see here is done with texturing. Uh, normal maps which are reactive to the sunlight being cast from the star over there uh, in this whole solar system the light on the planet is coming from the sun that's what's shining on the player um, the background galaxy uh, is also customizable I can shift these colors around um, so the whole thing is getting the same kind of procedural generation treatment you can change you know what colors and, and what shape and size things are make a water world. Let me go ahead and make this completely ocean world. And take away the ice caps. And I'm going to take away the cloud cover too. So now we just have this smooth smooth water world. We'll just bring this back real fast. So in game, we'll have a variety of these terrestrial type planets where you have uh, solid solid land features and uh, water features, 
and vegetation. So here's just a quick tease of the Starship interior I've been working on. Give you an idea of the scale of the ship and uh, what it'll be like inside. You can totally walk around inside. And I plan to model uh, this whole upper deck, several decks inside the ship and lots of locations inside the ship. There's going to be a lot of cool stuff to do in the ship. Here's the back end. A little conference room area in the back of the command deck. A handful of chairs. And there's a computer console in there uh, with three screens. There's a little galley area over here on the side. I'm going to put uh, probably a restroom over here. And then this would be the command center, the bridge of the ship, where we'll have the captain sit back here. I'm going to build a desk around this, kind of a console for him, so that the captain has some panels on the sides of his ship and to uh, make it a little less Star Trek-y, um, a little more mine. And, uh, yeah, the whole interior of the ship's coming along very, very well. I'll be showing some more of it very, very soon. Right now we've got eight decks, and I've got the first deck in gray box, for the most part, and I am uh, working on the next two decks now. Stand by for an update on that. Remember to like, share, and subscribe. Thanks.